So I started the company with Sarah two and a half years ago now, and the first thing we did was we did a different menu every week. Um, I just called the farms, and I wasn't familiar with the growing seasons in San Diego, so I just ordered uh, whatever they had, and then wrote the menu every week. And then Jay took over almost two years ago now, um, and I still order whatever I want, but he gets to figure out <laughs> what to do with it and how to make it add up to all the right numbers and 10 meals and 20 sides and how's that? Well, that actually is not that difficult because uh, since we go by the orders we get every week, I uh, just figure out the weight on the stuff that I get and I just kind of like divide it by the orders. So, uh, so he, what we really say is, yeah, we, it's really just a math problem. You just figure out how many orders you have, you divide it by the serving ounces, and that's how much we have to order. And whatever we order, it doesn't matter. We're just going to roast it, saute it, paprika, roasted garlic, salt, pepper, whatever makes it taste good. Um, so we're really allowed to do whatever is necessary. We also have issues where, um, because of the suppliers that we use uh, for meat, they will not have what we order a lot of the times, and we have to just make up stuff for whatever. So what's that like? Well, uh, sometimes it's a bit difficult because uh, according to the menus, we had to order from a specific player, but uh, since it's not available, we had to find another one with the same quality, with the same uh, quantity that we require. Uh, there is a couple of companies here in town that do pretty much the same, so we have not a problem ordering stuff. So what's the difference? Because you and I... I've worked at restaurants our whole life. What's the difference like when, when something comes up here and we run out of supply with what we do versus what happens at another restaurant? Where, like maybe like we put on the menu that it's dry aged ribeye, but if we're at a restaurant, we're gonna like if we run out, you know, you probably you call Cisco. You kind of maybe have stuff that isn't what's on the actual menu because you don't want to run out of stuff. Whereas we just cook whatever is actually there. Well, that is actually the best part of this Pete's Paleo thing. Because we have the ability to cook the stuff that is not actually on the menu. If uh, we don't, have, if it's not available in any place, and the, and the potatoes are not available, able to. Uh, think it's a protein, we can always substitute it with a, uh, in this case, a protein of the same quality, uh, just trying to uh, keep it a little bit different so it won't be like the same. It won't be cooked the same. Just different uh, flavors, different seasonings. If it was roasted, the one we couldn't provide, which is really, it will be sauteed, it will be a steam, poached, or depending on your mood, or depending on how you look up. <laughs> so, yeah, so we basically, we are controlled by quality and source. We are not controlled by recipes or menus. Um, by focusing on quality and source 100% of the time, we guarantee that our customers are always getting an amazing product that is the definition of what paleo is to us at Pete's Paleo and me, um, which is to get it from the best local source as possible, as seasonal as possible. Um, and having people like Jay and all the guys that um, you talked to earlier make that happen. Meal. It wouldn't be a meal, but it will be the bacon. Let's try it. It's good to know.